prior to joining UNICEF, um, I was co-founder and CTO of a mobile financial services company a long time ago, stretching back. Uh, but like the aim there was banking the unbanked, right? So trying to bring financial services, because I know what that can mean to empower individuals, families, uh, and communities, trying to bank the unbanked. Um, I worked in that for a few years. It was around that time that crypto started to appear on my personal radar. Uh, we didn't use it in our own uh, like company at that time, but I was aware of it and started to see the power that blockchain and crypto could have. I subsequently moved into UNICEF post uh, leaving my, my, my firm. Um, and that's when, well, shortly after joining UNICEF, I saw the opportunities for bringing blockchain uh, into UNICEF's work. At the time, I was working kind of at a country office level. Um, so my mandate was slightly different from, from what it is now. Now I'm, I'm, I'm in a better position for orchestrating for the use of blockchain within, uh, within UNICEF. Most people have heard of UNICEF, and most people are aware of what UNICEF's aim is. So our, we have a UN agency. Uh, with a mandate to improve the outcomes for all children all over the world. UNICEF is a country-led um, uh, organization, so we have offices in 190 countries and territories around the world. That's where we do most of our, all of our work, effectively. So each UNICEF country office would have programs around education, uh, around health, uh, protection, and social policy for improving outcomes for children, I'm working with governments. I, myself, work now in uh, UNICEF's Global Office of Innovation. Um, and this is like supporting UNICEF to kind of find new technologies, new processes, new products that can improve the, um, the outcomes for children, but can improve that programming at, at a country level. And that's kind of how we started to get involved in, in blockchain. So Going back to probably 2015, 2016, the Office of Innovation, prior to me personally joining, was already engaging uh, in blockchain uh, and like learning about the technology and like trying to see if we as UNICEF could understand it better to bring it to, to bear on um, some of our programming. That has continued, progressed. In fact, uh, the Office of Innovation, we have a venture fund whereby we invest in startup companies with what we call frontier technology, which blockchain is, for UNICEF at least, is a frontier technology. So we invest in companies with blockchain solutions that can impact um, uh, UNICEF's programming. A further kind of evolution of this engagement with blockchain, in 2019, UNICEF established a crypto fund, so kind of like a sub-fund of our venture fund, um, which at the time, and I'm pretty sure currently, is the only, um, we are the only UN entity that can like accept crypto donations, hold onto them, and then disperse them for programmatic activity. So we have leveraged those kind of learnings and those kind of constructs within UNICEF to really engage in a meaningful way with blockchain technologies and also with the communities as well. So we've invested in lots of blockchain based companies, some around financial inclusion. Uh, some around cash transfer programming. We have a company in Nepal that we've invested in that is uh, doing quite well. We have a blockchain-based <coughs> company called Statwig who uh, have blockchain-based supply tracking uh, platform. Uh, so UNICEF, uh, little known fact, is the world's largest procurer and supplier of vaccines. Uh, so we've invested in this uh, supply chain uh, blockchain solution. Uh, which has gone through a process and is now working with UNICEF Bangladesh on their um, supply. So like our thesis like around blockchain is like, in, like as the Office of Innovation is increased like efficiencies in time, increased uh, visibility and transparency, um, both in terms of the programmatic activity. So when we talk about the supply chain of vaccines end to end, seeing where those vaccines go, being able to have them be publicly verifiable, very important. When we talk about cash transfer programming, hugely important to see the money going into the system and coming out at the kind of beneficiary level. So that's really like some of the main areas that we uh, like look to uh, within blockchain. And 
if I talk a little bit about our crypto fund. So the crypto fund uh, for UNICEF, over the course of the last three years, we've effectively invested the equivalent of like $3.2 million worth of crypto, ETH or Bitcoin, into uh, some of these firms. Our associated costs with that is about $250. And like the time, as you can imagine, is like within seconds, within minutes, the money goes from UNICEF HQ to a company in Argentina, to a company in Kenya. They have their funds, they can continue their work. When you think about those kind of numbers and you transfer that to UNICEF's, for example, cash transfer programming. Last year, UNICEF did $600 million worth of cash transfer programming. I personally don't know what the costs were that were associated with that. But uh, I think that there are efficiencies uh, that, we can, that we can maybe make in that space through blockchain and through crypto as well. In short, the route to overcoming is like evidence and like having shown traction, having shown good, um, good results. Uh, UNICEF is very focused on delivering results. So UN agency, majority of our funding is public funds. We, we, we need to be like very... Um, focused in how we how we uh, deliver our program and how we use our funds. Internally, uh, it's very important that we show for our UNICEF colleagues the kind of utility of the technology, the utility of what we can do with these uh, tools and with uh, blockchain in general. Often hype cycles can get involved and there can be negative connotations. Um, and this is something that we try as Office Innovation, try and avoid and like look at the technology, <coughs> excuse me, um, and look at what it can do to deliver uh, on our programming. And once we gain the evidence for, for that, we present that to um, our colleagues around the world. And that seems to like get over a lot of the, and we call it misunderstanding uh, or lack of knowledge in it sometimes. The technology can definitely deliver um, efficiencies in that regard. Um, UNICEF is a UN agency that's like primarily involved in development, but we also are hugely active in the humanitarian space. So responding to um, crises that happen to communities, to countries, to children around the world. I, like I think back to some of my earlier work when I wasn't working with um, crypto and I wasn't working in blockchain. Uh, I think of like some humanitarian situations that occurred where we were looking to implement a supportive cash transfer program to people affected by like landslides or, or these kind of events. It took weeks to get these programs up and running and get the, the money to the beneficiaries. Uh, I think it's pretty clear that using um, technology like blockchain, like crypto, can, can close that gap substantially. And that's, that's kind of what we're trying to do with our work through Office of Innovation. I spoke earlier about being involved in a mobile money company, banking the unbanked, then my journey a little bit into uh, working at a country level and seeing, <clears throat> seeing the, the power that just giving the funds directly to the beneficiaries has. And I think that aside from the technology, the ethos uh, around Web3 is, is something that I, I'm very interested in, I think can uh, really be brought to bear on a lot of UNICEF's um, focus areas, both in terms of uh, engaging at the client level, at the beneficiary level, but also in terms of like uh, donations and funding as well. And that's, that's some areas that we're looking at to better uh, bridge that gap because I, I find um, often the way that UNICEF and, and, and UN agencies move by our kind of structures, we move quite slowly. We have to be careful but people in Web3 community can, can move much quicker and expect to move much quicker. So we're trying to kind of bring, bridge that gap a little bit um, and, and bring the best of both worlds.